Uh, well, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the March 2021 Board of Trustees meeting for Austin P. State University. Uh, we're kind of in a hybrid format today, so welcome to uh, Gary and Valencia and Robin uh, by Zoom, and the rest of us are here. Um, at this time, uh, McCarty, please call the roll. In accordance with Tennessee Code 8-44-108, Section C3, I have two questions to ask for those who are participating via electronic means, if you could answer for the record as I call the roll. Are you able to hear us clearly so that you can participate in this meeting? And please identify any persons present in the room with you. For those in person, you, must just, you may just say that you are present. Trustee Atkins? Here. Trustee Kanata? Present. Trustee Logan? Present. Trustee Jenkins? Here. Trustee Luck? Um, here. Uh, no one's in here with me, and I can hear you good. Thank you. Trustee May? Uh, here, and I can hear you well, and I'm alone. Trustee McKinnis? Present. Trustee Mueller? I am here. I can hear you, and I'm by myself. Trustee O'Malley? Here. Trustee Wadia? Here. Thank you, we have a quorum. Uh, before we begin our official board business, I have a couple of recognitions that I'd like to make. The first is for um, a special person in the room and that's Abby Hogan. Abby's leaving us. This will be her final student trustee meeting. Um, and it, it was ironic that after a year of serving on the board of trustees with Abby, I met her for the first time yesterday. Um, that's all things COVID. Um, Abby, you've uh, done a terrific job on, on the Board of Trustees, and you've also played an instrumental role in the presidential search uh, as a member of our committee um, that ended up with bringing Dr. Lakari in. Um, you were an important voice, uh, and you'll sorely be missed on the board. We're thrilled to have had you for the last year. I know you're going to the University of Mississippi. Um, <coughs> Are you studying higher ed? I hope I'm not on that search committee, but I wouldn't be all surprised if you were coming back to Austin P for some higher position down the road. So good luck, best of wishes to you, and uh, hopefully we'll get you back here at some point. Thank you. Um, this person, uh, Danelle Lightside, uh, is another special person in the room. I know she's been uh, she's been honored a little bit already, but not officially by uh, the board of trustees. Uh, Danielle, you took the reins of this university in the midst of the COVID pandemic. Uh, you served with distinction um, at a unique and critical time in the history of Austin P. Uh, while your title said interim president, you never served with an interim uh, mindset. You took off uh, with a passion. Uh, you led from the beginning. Uh, this university is a better place because of your presidency uh, in, in that difficult time. So if you would come up here for a second, um, we've got a little thing that we'd like to present to you. It's just a token. Pardon me, as it. Supposed to go. Oh, this, this looks good. Oh, this is awesome. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Oh. Uh, for president, August 10th, 2020 to February 28th, 2021, for leading with excellence in an unprecedented time with our thanks and appreciation in the history of board of trustees. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else would like to be honored this morning? Thank you both. Um, back to business. Please note that there are some items on your agenda that need to be adopted. Before I call for a vote, are there any items you wish to be extracted from the consent agenda? Hearing nothing, I move for adoption of the agenda. Is there, including the consent agenda items, is there a second? Second. Thanks, Billy. I move for adoption of the agenda. 
which includes the consent agenda items. Uh, it's been seconded by Billy Atkins. Secretary, please call the roll. Trustee Atkins? Yes. Trustee Kanata? Yes. Trustee Jenkins? Yes. Trustee Luck? Trustee Luck? Yes. Sorry. Okay. Trustee May? Yes. Trustee McKinnis? Yes. Trustee Mueller? Yes. Trustee O'Malley? Yes. Trustee Wadia? Yes. Um, yes. Thank you. The agenda is adopted. The minutes for the December 4th, 2020 board meeting and the special called meeting on December 21st, 2020 were circulated in advance. Are there any corrections or additions to those minutes? Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Secretary, please call the roll. Trustee Atkins? Yes. Trustee Kanata? Yes. Trustee Jenkins? Yes. Trustee Luck? Yes. Trustee May? Yes. Trustee McKinnis? Yes. Trustee Mueller? Yes. Trustee O'Malley? Yes. Trustee Wadia? Yes. Nine answers. Minutes are approved. And at this time, I'd like to recognize President Lakari, who will introduce today's campus spotlight. Thank you, Chair O'Malley. Uh, I'm pleased to introduce Michael Kazitz, who is the Assistant Vice President for Public Safety and has been in that position since July 2019. Last year, Michael has led the COVID-19 efforts at Austin P. Prior to that, Michael served as the Director of Public Safety and Chief of Police at APSU for six years. In his time at Austin P, his leadership paved the way for the police department to be accredited through the Tennessee Association of Chiefs of Police, creating the Parking and Transportation Department, created the Emergency Management Department, and brought the Environmental Health and Safety Department under the Public Safety umbrella. Before his arrival at Austin P. Michael spent 23 years working in the Department of Public Safety at Eastern Kentucky University in a variety of roles. Michael served as an adjunct instructor at APSU as well and Eastern Kentucky University, <coughs> teaching emergency management and criminal justice courses. Michael. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you today. And thank you so much for the opportunity to discuss Austin P.'s COVID-19 efforts since last March. On March 2nd, 2020, President White appointed the COVID-19 task force to plan for the pandemic in our area. The priority for the task force was to respond to the threat of the virus to keep our students, faculty, staff, and visitors safe. During this time, we began the process of preparing for remote operations. On March 12th, on the recommendation of the task force, the senior leadership team decided to suspend classes for the week after spring break to give the faculty time to move entirely to online instruction. The task force spent much of April solving issues that arose from moving the university to remote operations. We also developed university guidelines related to COVID and set up a series of risk categories that determines the university's course of action. At the end of the spring semester, planning began for the return to campus in the fall of 2020 with reduced capacity. We realized in order to reduce exposures in classrooms, we needed to be at least at 30% or less of the fire code capacity. Academic affairs worked on modalities to reduce the number of fully on-ground classes. The COVID-19 task force was disbanded and the COVID-19 recovery working group was formed to physically prepare the campus for return. This included removing desks from classrooms and furniture from common areas to reduce congregation points. We also created pathways through buildings to alleviate contact of people coming in and out of the buildings. At the same time, the Strategic Planning Integration Task Force was tasked with planning for issues that would arise further in the future. Both of these groups finished their work prior to the fall 2020 semester. In August, Interim President Whiteside formed the COVID Command Group to deal with issues that arose from repopulating campus. We implemented self-reporting of, of active COVID cases and exposures to help find clusters and campus exposures. We also added voluntary, voluntary daily symptom checking and location checking through the P-Mobile app. Although we had many cases, we found the majority of the COVID, COVID spread occurred off campus. Student health services began COVID PCR testing for exposed and symptomatic people, as well as surveillance testing for athletics and other groups. Planning began to provide vaccinations to the community. 
We completed the fall semester with an increase in COVID positive cases, but because of set procedures, we were able to finish the semester without shifting to remote learning. For spring 2020, we started on time and with increased COVID cases due to the holiday spike. We increased the, we increased the number of fully on-ground classes to approximately 14%. Our testing switched from outsourced sample analyzation, which delayed results up to 10 days, to our own analyzation lab that produces same day results. We began providing vaccinations to the community. Planning has now begun to have greater capacity for fall of 2021, and we hope that we can be close or at fire code capacity. Our COVID testing has been an invaluable asset to the university. Dr. Heather Phillips coordinates testing and analyzation. She spearheaded taking the samples from being outsourced to getting authorization from the state to analyze and report our samples. Samples are collected in a partnership between Student Health Services and the School of Nursing. Our lab is so good that Dr. Phillips can determine if a positive COVID result is the original strain or if it is a variant. Testing is provided Monday through Friday mornings. <clears throat> on March 2nd, 2021, oh, sorry. <clears throat> on March 2nd, 2021, one year to the day that the original COVID-19 ta task force was formed, APSU began providing COVID-19 vaccinations. Bridget Marley coordinates APSU's vaccination program. APSU's vaccination site is used to augment Montgomery County Health Department to vaccinate the community. The vaccination site is a partnership between Student Health Services, the School of Nursing, and APSU Public Safety. We are required to follow the vaccination phases of the state, but we also have a standby list comprised of APSU faculty and staff in the event we have extra doses, which we do not want to waste. The first week we vaccinated 197 individuals, 26 of which were faculty and staff from the standby list. The second week, we vaccinated 321 individuals, and this past week, we vaccinated 297. Uh, we did get some people off of the vaccination list from APSU, approximately 80 this week. Um, also this week, we worked with the Housing Authority, the Clarksville Housing Authority, to uh, vaccinate their, their seniors that were in phase. <laughs> didn't have transportation to go other places. We we're working on a plan with the United Way and Montgomery County Emergency Management to vaccinate the unsheltered population in Clarksville. This should happen in April. Congratulations to Chief Sammy Williams and nursing student Caitlin Merrill for receiving and giving the first vaccine on campus. Thanks go out to the Montgomery County Health Department, Tennessee Department of Health, and the Governor's Unified Command Group for all their assisting, assistance in helping Austin P respond to the COVID pandemic and then become a leader in testing and vaccinations. There were a lot of people that worked uh, within, within the university over the last year to get us where we are. I can't thank all the people at APSU enough who've contributed to the COVID-19 response and recovery. I would list names, but I'm so afraid I would forget somebody and I just don't wanna miss somebody. Uh, we had at least 40 members of the COVID-19 task force, 11 members of the recovery working group, 20 members of the strategic planning group, and at least 34 members of the COVID command group that continues to operate. We also had help from many people that dealt with specific issues, such as the physical plant, who helped prepare our facilities for reduced capacities, and will prepare them for the return to almost full capacity in the fall. We also had understanding and flexible faculty, students, and staff who helped us be successful in our return to campus. This took the whole campus community and great leadership from the senior leadership team to accomplish all that we have. And I'd personally like to thank Danelle for having faith in me and, and asking me to help with this. Thank you to, all, to you for allowing me to talk about our COVID efforts. I would be happy to address any questions. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you for your efforts. And as long as the students and the faculty and the staff, administration is the families, all these people are affected. So thank you.
Thank I'm you. Sure your family was affected too with all your dedication. We have a great group here at Austin P, and it, it it was a lot of people doing all the work. Michael, as as it's been said, thank you very much, and uh, you've done you and your team. I know you, you're hesitant to mention names, and it'd be great if we could you know shake everybody's hand. But you've done an incredible job on the fly, really. I mean, there, we we had no plans for this in March of last year. Um, you've navigated through this really, really well, and I know that in talking to Danelle through the summer, Austin Peay's cases of COVID were, were remarkably lower than a lot of other places. Uh, and that's, I think, due in large part to the way you managed it. So well done and thank you very much. Thank you so much. With that, I think we're taking a, a 10 minute break to take a photo or photos. McCartney. Um, nine, let me say 9.30. Reconvene at 9.30, okay, thank you. Uh, welcome back, I'd now like to recognize Trustee Mueller, Chair of the Academic Affairs Committee to give us a report of the committee meeting held yesterday. Thank you for the opportunity to present my report from yesterday's Academic Affairs Committee meeting. The committee reviewed and approved the following action item, which you approved today by consent, the termination of Master of Science of Engineering Technology. The committee reviewed and approved the following action items, which are on the agenda for your approval today. Tenure upon appointment for Dr. Michael Lakari, consideration of tenure appointments for faculty, no information items were presented to the committee. That concludes my report. I move that the board approve the minutes of the March 18th Academic Affairs Committee as written. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt the minutes of the Academic Affairs Committee. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Secretary, please call the roll. Trustee Atkins? Yes. Trustee Kanata? Yes. Trustee Jenkins? Yes. Trustee Luck? Yes. Trustee May? Yes. Trustee McKinnis? Yes. Trustee Mueller? Yes. Trustee O'Malley? Yes. Trustee Wadia? Yes. Nine yeses. Thank you. Minutes are approved. Trustee Mueller's report contained action items that we need to consider as a full board. Trustee Mueller, do you have a motion for us? I do. You have before you the information regarding the tenure upon appointment for Dr. Michael Lakari, president of Austin Peay State University. By direction of the committee, I move that the board approve tenure upon appointment for Dr. Michael Lakari. Because it's a motion of the committee, we do not need a second. We've heard the motion to approve tenure upon appointment for Dr. Michael Lakari. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, secretary, please call the roll. Trustee Atkins? Yes. Trustee Kanata? Yes. Trustee Jenkins? Yes. Trustee Luck? Yes. Trustee May? Yes. Trustee McKinnis? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Trustee O'Malley? Yes. Trustee Wadia? Yes. Nine yeses. Thank you. Motion carries. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Trustee Mueller? You have before you a copy of the list of faculty recommended for tenure. By direction of the committee, I move to approve the list of faculty recommended for tenure. We've heard the motion to approve the list of faculty recommended for tenure. Is there any discussion? I just have one question. Do you know when, the, when we approve this, when the letters go out to the faculty? Does anybody know that? I do not. I will send them out to the faculty next week. President Lakari will sign the letters and then we will send them to them next week. Thank you. Great. Thank you, McCartney. Any further discussion? Secretary, please call the roll. Trustee Atkins? Yes. Trustee Kanata? Yes. Trustee Jenkins? Yes. Trustee Luck? Yes. Trustee May? Yes. Trustee McKinnis? Yes. Trustee Mueller? Yes. Trustee O'Malley? Yes. Trustee Wadia? Yes. Nine yeses. Thank you, the motion carries. Thank you, Trustee Mueller. I recognize now Trustee Jenkins, Chair of the Student Affairs Committee to give us a report of their committee meeting yesterday. Thank you for the opportunity to present my report from yesterday's Student Affairs Committee meeting. The committee reviewed and approved the following action item. 
selection of a student trustee. This item will be presented to you for action in today's meeting. The committee reviewed the following information items. Student affairs initiatives toward retention, health and counseling services, student code of conduct revision. That concludes my report. <clears throat> Excuse me. I move that the board approve the minutes of the March 18th Student Affairs Committee as written. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt the minutes of the Student Affairs Committee. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Secretary, please call the roll. Trustee Atkins? Yes. Trustee Kanata? Yes. Trustee Jenkins? Yes. Trustee Luck? Yes. Trustee May? Yes. Trustee McKinnis? Yes. Trustee Mueller? Yes. Trustee O'Malley? Yes. Trustee Wadia? Yes. Nine yeses. Thank you. The minutes are approved. Trustee Jenkins' report contained action items that we need to consider as a full board. Trustee Jenkins, do you have a motion for us? Yes, uh, you have before you the information regarding the two individuals who applied and were selected as finalists to serve as our next student trustee. After careful discussion and deliberation, the committee proposes that the board select Molly Howard to serve in this position. By direction of the committee, I move that we select Molly Howard to serve as our next student trustee. The student will serve a one-year term beginning on May 8th, 2021, the day after commencement, and running through the 2021-22 academic year. Is there any discussion? Secretary, please call the roll. Trustee Atkins? Yes. Trustee Kanata? Yes. Trustee Jenkins? Yes. Trustee Luck? Yes. Trustee May? Yes. Trustee McKinnis? Yes. Trustee Mueller? Yes. Trustee O'Malley? Yes. Trustee Wadia? Yes. Nine yeses. Thank you. The motion carries. And, and congratulations to Molly. We look forward to seeing her at our May, or our next meeting, I guess, in June. So congratulations. Chairman O'Malley, I'd also like to recognize uh, Abby Hogan for the uh, all that she's done on, on for the board. Uh, I, like you, met her for the first time yesterday sitting beside her, uh, but she was always very direct and always uh, gave us a great perspective of how the students feel at Austin P. and I think that's critical to the success of this board, and we uh, wish you the very best at, uh, at Ole Miss, but you still got a root for Austin P. <laughs> <laughs> well said, Don. Thank you. Um, I'd not, now like to recognize Trustee Kanata, chair of the audit committee, to give us a report of their committee meeting yesterday. Thank you, Chairman O'Malley. The audit committee yesterday reviewed and approved one action item, and that was the revised internal audit plan for fiscal year 2021. The audit committee also listened to presentations regarding three things. The first was the review of the internal audit related charters and policies. The second was internal audit reports released between November 10th, 2020 and February 22nd, 2021. The list of outstanding audit recommendations. And the third is the financial and compliance audit report for fiscal year 2020. And I would just like to comment uh, to everyone that we had some really great news in the audit world yesterday. The um, Comptroller of the state uh, let us know that they awarded Austin P an unmodified opinion, zero, I believe it's called comments, zero um, comments or zero findings, and also no management discussion items, which is really very rare um, for that to happen. And it just goes to show you how well Mitch Robinson and his team are doing. And so Big um, congratulations to Mitch and his team for doing such an outstanding job managing the financials at Austin P. That concludes my report. I move that we approve the minutes of the March 18th Audit Committee meeting. Thank you, audit Catherine. Committee meeting as written. Thank you, Catherine. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt the minutes of the Audit Committee. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Secretary, please call the roll. Trustee Atkins? Yes. Trustee Kanata? Yes. Trustee Jenkins? Yes. Trustee Luck? Yes. Trustee May? Yes. Trustee McKinnis? Yes. Trustee Mueller? Yes. Trustee O'Malley? Yes. Trustee Wadia? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Department. Minutes are approved. Uh, Catherine, thank you for highlighting that 
uh, terrific audit report uh, result that's, that's really good. Now I'd like to recognize Trustee Atkins, Chair of the Business and Finance Committee to give us a report of their committee meeting yesterday. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The committee reviewed and approved the following action item that you approved by consent today. The federation of the revisions to policy 1.022, budget principles and control. The committee reviewed and approved the following action items. Confederation of the non-mandatory fees for the 2021-2022 academic year. And consideration of the housing rate for the 2021 and 2022 academic year. These items will be presented for your review and action in a few minutes. The committee also reviewed the following information items. The review of the budget status update the university's current budget status was discussed in light of the effects caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Review of the governor's budget recommendation recently. The governor held a state of the state address for his budget was discussed for the next fiscal year. The recommended budget was shared with the committee and will be reviewed by the legislature in the spring. Review of the fiscal year 2019-2020 financial report. Information from the financial report for fiscal year 2019-2020 was shared with the committee. The composite financial index was shared. The university's current composite financial index is one. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. I move that the board approve the minutes of the March 18th Business and Finance Committee as written. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Catherine. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt the minutes of the Business and Finance Committee meeting. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Secretary, please call the roll. Trustee Atkins? Yes. Trustee Kanata? Yes. Trustee Jenkins? Yes. Trustee Luck? Yes. <clears throat> Trustee May? Yes. Trustee McKinnis? Yes. Trustee Mueller? Yes. Trustee O'Malley? Yes. Trustee Wadia? Yes. Nine yeses. Thank you. The minutes are approved. Trustee Atkins' report contained action items that we need to consider as a full board. Trustee Atkins, do you have a motion for us? Yes, Mr. Chairman. You have before you a copy of the non-mandatory fees for the 2021 and 2022 academic year. By direction of the committee, I move to approve the non-mandatory fees for the 2021-2022 academic year. Thank you. You've heard the motion on the approval of non-mandatory fees for the 2021-22 academic year. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Secretary, please call the roll. Trustee Atkins? Yes. Trustee Kanata? Yes. Trustee Jenkins? Yes. Trustee Luck? Yes. Trustee May? Yes. Trustee McKinnis? Yes. Trustee Mueller? Yes. Trustee O'Malley? Yes. Trustee Wadia? Yes. Nine yeses. Thank you. The motion carries. You also have before you a copy of the housing rates for the 2021-2022 academic year. By direction of the committee, I move to approve the housing rates for the 2021 and 2022 academic year. You heard the motion on the housing rates for the 2021-22 academic year. Is there any discussion? I might just say just as an observation, I think the rates across the board were at or under 1%, which is yes. pretty good. Um, any further discussion? Secretary, please call the roll. Trustee Atkins? Yes. Trustee Kanata? Yes. Trustee Jenkins? Yes. Trustee Luck? Yes. Trustee May? Yes. Trustee McKinnis? Yes. Trustee Mueller? Yes. Trustee O'Malley? Yes. Trustee Wadia? Yes. Nine yeses. Thank you. Thank you, Billy. Uh, thank you for the opportunity now to present my report from yesterday's executive committee meeting. The committee reviewed and approved the following action items. Consideration of APSU's mission profile. This item will pre be presented for your review and action after the approval of the executive committee minutes. That concludes my report. I move that the board approve the minutes of the March 18th Executive Committee as written. Is there a second? Second. 
We have been moved and seconded that we adopt the minutes of the executive committee. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, secretary, please call the roll. Trustee Atkins? Yes. Trustee Kanata? Yes. Trustee Jenkins? Yes. Trustee Luck? Yes. Trustee May? Yes. Trustee McKinnis? Yes. Trustee Mueller? Yes. Trustee O'Malley? Yes. Trustee Wadia? Yes. Nine yeses. Thank you. You have before you Austin P's mission profile statement. By direction of the committee, I move that the board approve Austin P State University's mission profile statement. Is there any discussion? Secretary, please call the roll. Trustee Atkins? Yes. Trustee Kanata? Yes. Trustee Jenkins? Yes. Trustee Luck? Yes. Trustee May? Yes. Trustee McKinnis? Yes. Trustee Mueller? Yes. Trustee O'Malley? Yes. Trustee Wadia? Yes. Nine yeses. Thank you. Uh, now I'd like to invite Mitch Robinson, Vice President for Finance and Administration, to provide an update on the Division of Finance and Administration. Thank you, Chairman O'Malley. I appreciate the opportunity to share with the Board of Trustees information regarding the Finance and Administration Division here at Austin P. State University. I first want to make sure that everyone understands that what we do here in Finance and Administration is to provide mostly behind the scenes services in numerous areas across campus, some directly to students and some directly to our faculty and staff. Finance and administration includes eight main areas, budget and financial planning, business services and finance, capital planning, design and construction, human resources, information technology, physical plant, public safety, and finally university facilities. Between myself and my direct reports, we bring to the university over 260 years of experience in higher education. Of course, you might have heard yesterday, I'm losing 31 of those years because of a retirement coming up at the end of this month with Sonia Stewart. Uh, in the budget and financial planning department, it's made up of two staff and is currently led by executive director, Sonia Stewart. This area is responsible for coordinating and preparing the annual appropriations request for THEC and the proposed revised and estimated budgets for the university. The office has recently acquired a budget financial forecasting software to help provide more accurate revenue estimates and expected costs of our strategic initiatives and to use as an analytical tool for review of new and existing academic programs. Our business services area under the guidance of Benji Harmon, Associate Vice President and Chief Financial Officer consists of 35 total employees and major areas of responsibilities include accounting services, auxiliary support services, payroll services, procurement and contract services, and student account services. These areas provide a wide range of financial services that support and assist in maintaining a strong fiscal environment for the university. Business services also has oversight for the university bookstore and support services to athletics, auxiliaries, and the APSU Foundation. As some of you may have already know, uh, business services successfully completed the fiscal year 2019-2020 audit report with zero audit findings and no management discussion items. As you can imagine, this is a very rare occurrence in public higher education. And uh, my thanks go out to uh, Benji Harmon and his staff, Jackie Struckmeyer, and many others that I uh, won't name at this point in time, but they all deserve the credit, not me. So, so you know. Uh, additionally, the campus bookstore uh, successfully, as you know, relocated over to 328 College Street in Barnes and Noble. Just so you know, the bookstore operator provides over $15,000 in textbook scholarships, <laughs> uh, along with an estimated $10,000 in free merchandise that is was distributed for a variety of campus student events. The Capital Planning, Design, and Construction Office has four employees, led by our director and architect, Mark Bruner. This department manages all of APSU's capital improvements projects that require designers. 
It oversees capital planning and capital maintenance requests that are made to state offices, and it maintains the university space inventory and annual facilities insurance reports. As you already know, the APSU Health Professions Building ranked in the number two slot for TEC funding for FY2122, and it is included in the governor's budget as well. Pending an approval from the legislature, design for the HPB building will begin in September of this year for planned construction to be completed as early as fall of 2024. Assistant Vice President and Chief Human Resource Officers, Dr. Jacinda Davidson, leads the human resource team of nine staff in making APSU an employer of choice and attracting, developing, and retaining diverse talent for the university. Human Resources endorses a high performance culture that inspires individual achievement in employees and allowing them to actively contribute to and have a positive impact on the university. In 2020, Human Resources developed partnerships with APSU colleges, departments, and external providers to offer 96 unique staff training and development sessions through HR's Lead, Grow, and Learn Lead and Grow series. The total number of participants for all of the sessions was 1,567 participants. The Office of Information Technology provides technology innovations and solutions for students, faculty, and staff through help desk services, campus connectivity, classroom and lab technology, project facilitation and management, and software implementation. There are 30 positions in IT led by Associate Vice President and Chief Information Officer David Sanchez. The major areas within the department are enterprise applications and solutions, information technology security, infrastructure services, and technical services. The IT department recently implemented Aleutian Recruit, a customer relations management system that allows the admissions office to effectively recruit and manage prospective students. They also successfully moved the APSU disaster recovery site from Smyrna, Tennessee to the cloud with Amazon Web Services, a far more flexible and robust disaster recovery solution. The physical plant has 72 employees under the guidance of Executive Director Tom Hutchins. The physical plant maintains and operates the facilities of the university to create an environment in which faculty can teach, students can learn, and staff members can perform. The major areas within the department are building maintenance, landscape and grounds, key control, work order control, central receiving, moving and custodial services, and central utilities plant operations. The physical plant made many preparations for COVID-19 prevention on campus by creating socially distant spaces in classrooms and public seating areas. They built over 190 acrylic partitions for public facing desks, coordinated outdoor study spaces, and ordered over 90,000 personal protective supplies and distributed them across campus. Recently, the campus received certification as a level three arboretum through the Tennessee Urban Forestry Council. The campus features more than 120 species of trees, 77 of which are native to Tennessee. The trees in the arboretum are spread all across campus, but the majority are centered, concentrated in the center of campus. In the months following the tornado that hit the campus in January 1999, the inaugural event, Operation Restoration, was organized to replace the hundreds of trees and shrubs that were destroyed during the storm. Now every April, the campus holds the Plant the Campus Red event, where an army of volunteers made up of students, faculty, staff, and community members uh, plant thousands of red and white flowers across campus, transforming it in one afternoon and providing participants with some ownership in the way our campus looks. This year's Plant the Campus Red event is scheduled for Earth Day, April 22nd, and registrations for the event will be open soon. 
The physical plan oversaw the APSU connection to the Clarksville Greenway Trail System, a 0.6 mile long section that meets ADA requirements and was funded by the Clarksville Montgomery County Community Health Foundation and the APSU Sustainable Campus Fee. Additionally, APSU was recognized by the Clarksville Montgomery County Green Certification Committee for Sustainability Efforts, receiving Best Overall Organization in the Large Organization category, and recognition for achieving Platinum Level, the highest level, by the way, during the 2020 recertification. Public Safety includes 35 staff, led by Assistant Vice President Michael Kazitz. Major areas include Campus Police, Emergency Management, Environmental Health and Safety, and parking and transportation and transportation. The Office of Emergency Management was created and a director hired last year to lead the efforts to maintain a comprehensive emergency management program here at the institution and facilitate the completion of a continuity of operations plan. Currently, 91 departmental plans have been created with more work to continue throughout this year. In response to COVID-19, the Public Safety and Emergency Management Offices helped to establish a COVID-19 testing site at the R building and the COVID-19 vaccination site in the parking lot adjacent to the R building. Last year, the Parking and Transportation Office implemented a license plate recognition system software to identify vehicles parked on campus, uh, which would thereby eliminate the need for administering parking decals to students faculty and staff. The Office of University Facilities, the, the final office in finance administration is made up of four employees um, led by director Andy Keene. The office offers room and event reservation services to the university and the Clarksville community. It oversees the Morgan University Center and it is responsible for the Gov ID card operations. Over the past year, University Facilities has transitioned to new ID software that integrates access control, meal plans, and ID pictures into a seamless operating system. Uh, the departments within finance and administration obviously have to collaborate on various special projects and initiatives to provide the best services available for the campus. One such collaboration occurred with the APSU's leasing of space and the future downtown multipurpose event center. Design and construction, business services, information technology, the physical plant and legal services all played a major role in putting together a lease that best serves the university. We also had uh, various people involved in the helicopter acquisitions uh, for our aviation science program, design and construction, business services, information technology, and legal services also work together with the Tennessee School Bond Authority to produce a lease agreement for the helicopters that are out there at the airport. And then additionally, the Ann Ross Bookstore Project saw a similar collaboration with various departments on campus. And then our last slide is of the bookstore ribbon cutting ceremony showing Ann Ross, a dear friend and supporter of the university, alongside myself uh, and Danelle Whiteside. Chairman O'Malley, that concludes my report on the Finance and Administration Division. I welcome any questions you or the other trustees might have at this time. Great job, Mitch. I had no idea that you were headed up all of that stuff. That's, uh, that's incredible. Thank you question for you, Mitch. You mentioned, a, did I hear you say you had a new customer management system, CRM? CRM, yes. And did we have one before and just got a new one or is this the first time we've? Uh, this is a brand new one for our admissions department. That's going to allow them to be able to target and process more quickly and keep in contact and manage those recruits. So uh, it's the first time we've had one in the admissions office for them to use. When we think about the number of um, the enrollment and how important it is to get more students here, that's just critical. So managing that will be very important. It's like going I, I will say this, uh, uh, the folks over there in the admissions office, Amy Corlew and, and uh, Nancy King Sanders, uh, they did a great job of uh, putting the 
together a plan of how we would be able to move forward. And uh, uh, again, we were able to get that put in place last summer. But I uh, expect a lot of good things uh, regarding that CRM as we move forward. Could you just briefly talk a little bit about one of the bullet points was the parking and transportation and the software? Uh -huh. Can you just see a little uh, deeper? I, right I, I will be glad to because uh, uh, Michael Cassett's gave me a quick little uh, nickel dime tour of <laughs> how that thing works the other day, just uh, right after the uh, ribbon cutting for the Greenway. Uh, it's a license plate recognition. There's a, uh, a green. Uh, green, really green, it is a green card because it's electric and it has these cameras on top of it. Looks a little strange, but uh, they're not really big cameras, but it goes through the parking lot and it can recognize uh, your license plate. And then it will immediate tell, immediately tell you whether or not that car is parked in the right place. And if it's not, obviously that means you get a right a ticket, but uh, it also, uh, uh, you just register your vehicle, you put your plate in, and uh, it just uh, makes it so much easier as you're doing enforcement as you drive through campus. Does it issue the ticket too on the software? It's got a little ticket printer right there on its dashboard. It's pretty slick. That's slick. So we'll, we'll, we'll certainly make sure that you all put your license plates in them. So you don't <laughs> oh, get Thank you. Anybody else? Yep. No comments? Congrats on the zero findings again. That's all. Awesome. Yeah, again, that, that had nothing to do with me. But thank you. <laughs> for the last several meetings, we had a discussion, and I don't want to put Mitch on the spot. Uh, but our capital projects, the health science building, can give the board a little update. Of, we'll make yeah, sure and I must apologize. Uh, uh, Mr. Atkins, I uh, skipped over a slide yesterday, uh, and uh, the the uh, governor did make a recommendation for funding, full funding of our health professions building. Uh, it was number two on TX slot, and that's about a total cost of about seventy million dollars, of which uh, uh, the institution had to come up with a match of a little over four million, so about sixty. Uh, six or so million dollars coming from the state. Um, the uh, again, the plan is to uh, once it's approved by the legislature, and I don't believe that there's any right reason why it would not be, unless we had another COVID outbreak. Uh, is that I should knock on wood, right. but uh, but uh, the uh, we'll start in September October with the design phase, and that will take probably at least a year. Uh, so the bids would go out after that is uh, taking place. And we would hope that the construction would last about 18 months and then we would be able to open it up as early as fall 2024. The location is going to be over on 8th Street, right next to the Maynard Mathematics and Computer Science Building. It's uh, going to be a fairly large footprint for the building. I think it's about 120 or so thousand square feet, maybe more like 140. Uh, and uh, it's going to be three levels. Uh, we also received $4.7 million in capital maintenance recommendations from the governor. Uh, that is to cover the cost of replacing the roof on the Sunquist Science Complex. Uh, that's totaled about uh, $3.2 million. And then we have uh, another $1.5 million uh, to cover replacement of the control systems in that building. Uh, we're, we're very thankful for the state to uh, recommend that level of funding for the institution. And, uh, we're ready to rock and roll with that design as we get the okay from uh, the uh, legislature. Thanks, Mitch. Yeah. Great report, Mitch. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, before we uh, I officially turn the meeting over to Dr. Lakari. Let me just say on behalf of my colleagues on the board, our official kind of welcome and congratulations to you, Mike, on being Austin Peay's 11th president. Um, we, uh, we look forward to a long and successful tenure together and um, 
we are here to support you in, in that effort. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, you so much. I appreciate that. And the meeting is yours. Thank you. Well, first, I would like to say that I'm excited to be underway here at Austin P. I'm very honored to serve as the 11th president of this great university. And Kirsten and I are quickly settling in. Uh, thank you to the entire university community, the city of Clarksville, Montgomery County, really the state of Tennessee for being so welcoming. Uh, everything already is starting to feel like home. I want to thank the transition team for making my start as smooth as possible. So thank you to Dr. McCartney Johnson, Dr. Carol Clark, Chris Phillips, and Bill Persinger for all of your help. Um, finally, I need to thank Danelle Whiteside for her leadership over the past seven months as interim president and for her help and support during my transition and start. She was always willing to text and chat on the phone and have a Zoom meeting, sometimes with her son there too, as I was preparing. <laughs> and so uh, I will always appreciate her work, leadership, and dedication to Austin Peay, so thank you. Today, I, I want to start by uh, reviewing uh, the few days leading up to my March 1st start date and my first day, because I think it's indicative of the strength, vitality, and momentum of Austin P. Within just two hours of arriving in Clarksville, I found myself at Johnny's Big Burger for a dinner and a bun and cream, uh, and I can see why this is an Austin P. tradition. Uh, I am also grateful for the Foy Fitness Center as a result. Um, I appreciate the hard work of the good folks in human resources, Lorraine Bain, Robert Lane, Fonda Fields, and Jacinda Davidson in particular, who helped me navigate the onboarding process. And thank you to Kim Jorgensen in IT for the help setting all of, up, all of my equipment up. Um, I'm so glad that our son uh, Daniel was able to drive down to catch the football game with us on February 28th. While it was a soggy day, I enjoyed meeting many donors and friends of the university, and of course, watching the Gubs win the game. My first day on the job had me in Nashville, and I'm thankful for the preparation that the team and I put in to ensure a successful, if unexpected, appearance in front of the House Government Operations Committee that day. While there, I had the opportunity to visit with two Austin P. students who are doing internships with members of the state legislature. Student Sarah Martin in Senator Mark Pody's office and Jack Arrington in Senator Bill Powers' office. Later that evening, still on my first day, I listened to Tony Liu, a graduate student in the Department of Music, perform his piano recital to fulfill the requirements for his Master of Music degree. He was absolutely amazing. You know, and I, so I say all of this to highlight the energy that Austin P has, the terrific people in the Austin P family, and I'm thrilled to join everybody here. Good news on the COVID front, as you heard from Michael Kazitz, the university has done a thorough job of keeping our people safe. I'm happy to report that the vaccine site on campus opened successfully on March 2nd. 66 people were vaccinated that very first day which went smoothly. As of yesterday, we have vaccinated 815 people, including me and Kirsten. The pace currently averages about 100 vaccinations per day, and we have a robust standby list, as you heard, so that no drop of vaccine is wasted at the end of each day. And in fact, that's how Kirsten and I received ours. On March 30th, we will increase our capacity to at least 200 shots per day as folks return to receive their second dose. We will operate this vaccination site as long as the Montgomery County Health Department needs our help. We hope to wrap up in June, but are prepared to operate until August 1st, if need be. As you heard too, we're partnering, partnering closely with the community to address specific needs as well. For example, you heard that we shifted a, a day's worth of vaccinations to support the Clarksville Housing Authority effort to vaccine, uh, vaccinate their senior population. Uh, exciting uh, a piece of information here. It's our nursing faculty and students who are the ones giving the injections. So this truly is a campus effort uh, in support of the public health of the region and students are gaining valuable experience. We even received national attention 
as one of our nursing students, Dominique Brockman vaccin vaccinated her mom, Beatrix Brockman, who is a professor here in the Languages and Literatures Department. And the story ran on the Good, uh, Good Morning America website and was also picked up by ABC News. And so that was pretty, that was pretty exciting. That was cool. That was earlier this week. Our campus COVID numbers remain low, both in terms of those isolating with positive cases and those in quarantine as a result of contact tracing. This means our safety protocols are effective and I'm thankful that the campus community continues to take this virus seriously, even though we're all getting tired of the precautions, myself included, and we're all seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. We will continue our campus protocols even though, the Montgomery County, even though Montgomery County has ended their mask mandate. Looking forward, I'm excited though that we are returning to pre-pandemic class formats for the summer. And we fully intend for campus to return to face-to-face -face classes and normal in-person operations in the fall, thank goodness. On the fundraising front, we are seeing great success. We have already surpassed last year's total of $11.4 million. And with three months to go, we are, all, we are within $30,000 of 12 million uh, total raised so far in this fiscal year. So that is wonderful. This fiscal year, we have more than doubled any previous year's million dollar plus commitments and cash gifts are up 16% from our five-year average. Notably, the What If campaign for Austin P has been remarkably successful. In a time when many universities are struggling to raise money, our campaign has gone public and is already just shy of the $65 million goal nine months before the target end date. I'm grateful for the leadership of the campaign steering committee chaired by Jenna Holloman, for Chris Phillips and his advancement staff, and for Danelle Whiteside for kicking off the public phase this past November. April 20th is Gov's Give, our day of giving effort. This will be mostly online via social media and mobile platforms. It will run for one day, nine hours and 27 minutes, a play on our 1927 year of founding. The goal is to average 19.27 donors per hour. So about 650 donors total for the day. On the state government front, I had the opportunity to introduce myself to a number of state representatives, senators and other officials last week, including Deputy Speaker Curtis Johnson, Speaker Cameron Sexton, Senator Bill Powers and Representative Jason Hodges. This also included a visit with a third APSU student doing an internship in Nashville, Blue Tinsley interning for Representative Mark White, Chair of the House Education Administration Committee. The day also gave me an opportunity to meet with Governor Lee. Throughout the day, I emphasized the importance of our health professions building and promoted our request to, for support for the development of the Institute of National Security and Military Studies. This institute would build on Austin Peay's mission and the state of Tennessee's position really as a, as a leader uh, in the nation serving the military. This institute would include academic programming, military outreach programs, and interdisciplinary research on national security and intelligence issues. I am happy to report today that Deputy Speaker Johnson and Bill Powers, Senator Powers, have filed amendments to the appropriation bill to include $750,000 for three years or 2.25 million total to support the launch of this institute. Support for the health professions building is strong as you just heard from Mitch Robinson. It's been included in the governor's budget and is pending approval by the General Assembly, I am absolutely grateful for the support that Austin P receives from the state. On the academic front, I'm pleased to inform you that the Tennessee Higher Education Commission approved the proposed online Master of Science in Criminal Justice. As you recall, you approved this proposed program at the December 4th meeting. The program is now pending approval by SACS COC and is expected to be implemented in the fall. So thank you to Provost Cronley and Department Chair Scott Colhane for their efforts in uh, getting this new program launched. The Center for Advancement of Faculty Excellence will launch this fall, building upon our former Center for Advancement of Teaching and Learning. The uh, center's primary objective is the development of innovative and effective teaching to support faculty and student engagement. It will, however, also support 
effective advising, scholarly work, and impactful service. Essentially, the goal here is to establish a holistic professional development resource for faculty. Earlier this week, Provost Cronley announced the selection of the center's first director, Dr. Melissa Cates, who is an associate professor in health and human performances and is serving currently as the associate dean of the College of Behavioral and Health Sciences. Dr. Cates has been with APSU since 2003, and in 2016, she received the Socrates Award for Excellence in Teaching. And I'm glad you all had the chance to meet Brittany Young, our new women's basketball head coach. She comes to us from Mississippi State. She's known as a tireless worker, fierce competitor, and standout recruiter and relationship builder. She will be formally introduced later today. I'm excited to have her here. And finally, it's homecoming week. <laughs> I know it's strange to say that in the middle of March, but uh, frankly, everything about the past 12 months has been a little bit weird. Um, I'm grateful that we're able to have homecoming, if, even if it's rather modified as it brings some life to campus. I had the opportunity to introduce the homecoming court on Monday evening, and I'm looking forward to the military alumni chapter dinner this evening, the Marvin Posey Jr. scholarship art exhibit tomorrow, and of course the game against UT Martin on Sunday afternoon. Kickoff is at 2 p.m. That concludes my report. There are a number of uh, interim items that I will turn your attention to, which are provided for your information, but I do want to highlight one of those items, uh, and that is the appointment of Dr. McCartney Johnson as the board secretary. So congratulations and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lakari, for a great report. Uh, you've certainly hit the ground running in the first two and a half weeks. So well done, thank, thank you. you. Uh, before we adjourn, are there any additional comments or questions from any of your colleagues? Mike, I'd like to thank you for your leadership during uh, the presidential search. Uh, I know you spent countless hours and uh, we, uh, we appreciate the fine job you did. I think you did a lot of Um, as a reminder, our next regularly scheduled meeting will take place July, June 3rd and 4th, 2021. I move that the meeting adjourn. Let's go, Pete. Let's go, Pete. It, it's been moved. Was that a second? <laughs> I guess so. It, it is moved and seconded that the meeting adjourn. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any aye. opposed say no. The ayes have it, and the meeting is adjourned. Let's go, Pete. Thank you all.